Hello everyone, this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series and we are going to be talking to two beautiful ladies today about National Teen Dating Violence Month. We're going to be talking to Miss Katrina Thomas and Miss Jean Benton today about their organizations and about teen dating violence awareness. If you know anything about Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, please go into the comments right now and tell us what do you know about teen dating violence um, specifically? And what is it that you are doing this month to educate your teens, not just your teens, but your children about teen dating violence and violence among teens, period? Teen dating violence is something that is rampant in our schools, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and it's worth talking to all of our kids about, not just our teens, our, our younger ones, um, our older children, um, also our families. Joining together, talking about teen dating violence is very important. Um, February has been designated as National Teen Dating Violence Month. Um, it is a national initiative um, that has been in existence for a few years. And it is um, for us to be able to raise awareness and protect our teens from violence. We know that there is a lot of violence in our schools and in our neighborhoods, um, the ones that we know the most about are the violence that happened in the schools with the teen shootings and losing our young ones in the streets. So teen dating violence is not just about dating. It's about violence overall. And so when I go out into the community and I talk to um, youths and youth groups and organizations about teen dating violence, I always include not just about dating, but about gun violence, about bullying, and about stalking as well. Um, I think it's important that we encompass not just the dating aspect, but also violence in general, violence in families, domestic violence, um, sexual assault, shooting, guns, and bullying. All of them are very important, and I feel that all of them should be included this month because all of these topics are very important in, um, in helping our children stay safe, um, especially in these days and times. The days are not getting better. Our times are not getting better, and our children need to be safe. They need to be protected, and they need to know that there is somewhere that they can go starting at home. A lot of teens and youths that are involved in violence is because they are seeing violence at home. So teaching our children and raising awareness about dating violence and about violence in general starts at home. It starts with our neighbors. It starts with our community. And everyone knows the adage of it takes a village, but the village has to be united in order to educate and raise awareness among our kids. Again, Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is not just for teens. It's for our younger children as well because they are in schools. They have older brothers and sisters. They have um, their parents that are working adults. Um, they're living in a family environment, whether it's with their natural parents or whether it is um, with grandparents. So all children need to be educated and all children need to understand that dating violence and violence in the communities and families and amongst each other is something that is a national effort. It's a community effort. It's a local effort and it starts at home. So um, right now we have... Um, several people online, and one of them is Miss Katrina. So I'm going to bring her on so that she can talk to us about her, her organization and also to tell us what her organization is doing to um, raise awareness, excuse me, I'm tongue tied tonight, raise awareness about teen dating violence and violence in general. So I am going to bring her on now. And while we while we are waiting for her to come on, I would like for you to tell me what you understand teen dating violence to be and what you are doing in your homes to talk to your children about teen dating violence and about violence in general. 
Hello, Miss Trina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed. I am doing good. You look beautiful as usual. Thank you. I try. I try, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm loving your hair, too. It's gorgeous. We're freezing up. Yeah, I think we I think we have a freeze. Let me move. Let me see if this works. <laughs> okay. 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 How's that? Okay. Let's see. There we go. Yeah. I think I think we're okay. good now. <laughs> I, thought for, I thought it was me. And I was like, oh Lord, I'm about to get up and move. <laughs> oh no. It might it might be me. I was sitting on the floor, so now I'm sitting up. So I was comfy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, that's so, okay. Do what you gotta do. Yes, ma'am. So everyone, please meet Katrina Thomas. And Katrina Thomas um, has her own organization, Loving Yourself, No More Abuse. And she is having a amazing event this month, and I'm so proud of her. Um, it's a big mm -hmm. deal. And so, um, Katrina, can you first tell us a little bit about your organization to start us off? Uh -huh. Of course I can. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in. And thank you, Tiffany, for having me tonight. Um, Loving Yourself No More Abuse was based off of myself. Um, I came from an abusive relationship of nine and a half years. This may be about me, but it's more about the ones out there that need us. So it's not self-absorbed about me. It's ones who are lost out there and they need a voice and I am that voice to help. So this organization is being a voice to take out and force and resources and to give you granted education where we don't charge you anything, but we want to train you to know how to speak up and how to walk out. So that's called shatter the silence because there's so much silence. And that's why we have so much death across the world worldwide with domestic violence, because too many don't speak. And then we just have ones that want to judge you and just tell you go right now, but it takes steps. And if you don't know those steps and there's no one out here to educate you on steps on how to get away and get away and be safe, you and your children, then don't judge anyone because it's a hard task. It took me a long time. I left and I went back several times because I could not live without them. I wasn't in my financial status that I am currently. So it took a lot of rebuilding and a lot of change mindset to get this mind on the right path of thinking of putting God first. Let's not never forget God because he is the Holy Spirit that makes us move the way we should. And that is the first thing I had to do. Yes, that is the first thing I had to do is to learn to love my God and to trust and give him faith, okay, and be obedient. And then I had to educate myself. But I did this while I was in my relationship, while still being abused mentally, physically, emotionally. And ladies and gentlemen, just understand where I'm coming from. It's not easy. Sometimes be the one that can have that listening ear because to listen is how you're going to learn and get someone to open up to you because they need to know that they're getting love from someone else outside of that abusive relationship because we do live in fear and we do be fearful even when we're out in public because that abuse is watching everything that you do. And you will pay for whatever you do wrong when you go back. Because when you're out in public, a lot of people don't understand that your abuser will put on a great show. Okay? Yes, they will. <laughs> okay, a yes, great will. show to pretend like every... And when you realize this, you learn how to perform, as I said um, at Tiffany's Speak Up, series that we did live. I was a great performer because I knew I couldn't let my family know what was going on because then they would try to come in and grant it and judge me and try to rush me out. And see, that's how we lose lives. Like I said, you have to have 
right. You have to have a safety plan. You have to have some kind of resources. So loving yourself is about resources. And then the ending goal is my safe house that will be open up this year. And I'm so proud of myself because I didn't have that. Yes. I didn't have that option of going to a safe place. I just right. left. I left on a win. I didn't worry about no furniture, no nothing. I just left because I knew, I felt like God was saying, if you stay here, you're going to die. So I just left. Now, I know everybody can't be me, but I still that you can use to get away. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, this event that I'm doing for Teen Violence Awareness Month, I'm so proud of myself because I have so many people who are talking about good things. We're talking about human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about sexual, emotional, mental. And guess what, you guys? And I'm the most proud of I have some men oh, that's to talk about. Uh, you know, this is great. We all know that abuse can be all females. We mostly think it's female, but there are men out here that get mentally and emotionally abused. That's you true. have some aggressive women, and you know we can't we can't leave them out. We can't leave anybody out. That's even same sex anything. You can't leave them out because this is being done in all type of ways. And our children will push you in the dark to be quiet right. about their situation and want you to be hush hush. But the time is for now to stop the silence and to be a voice and to seek out what you need in life, to seek out advancements, to get your education, to get yourself back in your financial status. Don't be scared to leave because your money is low. See, these are all the things that the devil wants to do to hold you down. He wants to put boundaries there so you feel like you can't move and you got walls blocking you. But my God is, man, more powerful than that. <laughs> and he, yes, he, is. he can move mountains and I'm telling you there's just so many females that I see on a regular basis and being that we came from that situation Tiffany we can recognize when somebody is going through something and you know I don't tell them come on go with me I said you know what can we exchange numbers so right. that I can talk to you I, I want to let you know that I want to be comfort to you Right. I want to be that big sister or that, or that, I don't care, auntie, mama, you know, I could be somebody's mama because I'm already two people mama, but, <laughs> but you know, I could be somebody's mama. I, um, I have so many kids that call me mom and they're not even mine. I don't know if I birthed all these children, but they call me mama, <laughs> you know, but that's what I need. And, you know, I think being the voice and being that I went through it, I can give you more of me. Mm -hmm. and my experiences to help you see that, you know, yes, I had black eyes. Yes, I had my hair pulled. I've been choked too. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hardly breathe and almost took my last breath. But you know what? God is better than that. And he tells you, look into yourself. You have to right. love you before you can make any kind of moves. Okay? That's if you don't love yourself and understand what you've been through, Mm -hmm. You can't move forward. That's very you true. That's very you true. That's something, that's something that I talk about when um, I talk to um, victims. Um, I talk to them about the, the mindset, not only um, having faith in God, but changing your mindset. Because um, in order for you to go from being a victim to a survivor, you have to go through certain mm -hmm. steps. And it starts with your mental um, right. mentally getting prepared, mentally knowing that you deserve better, mentally um, realizing that the situation you're in is not healthy, um, mentally knowing that you need to protect yourself and you need to protect your kids. Um, if you are not able to mentally fathom what your situation is and the seriousness of it, then it's hard to get out of the situation. It's hard to, to leave. It's hard to to, to, to gain the strength to say enough is enough. You have to mentally be able to grasp what's going on with you in order for you to get out of the situation. And, You're and, right about and, that. And, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you have to. And sometimes that's hard because your abusers, they break you down so much. They break you down to the point where you might feel as if you've lost yourself. But that feeling you get, that that fear, the pain, the the anguish, the 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 resentment, all of those things that you feel inside as as a victim, that means that mentally you still are there. You still That's right. have a piece of you left that knows that what you're going through is not right. Whether you feel you deserve it or not, because some women and men feel they deserve the abuse. But there's always, yeah, there's always something in your mind that is telling you this cannot be life. This cannot be love. This cannot be the way I'm supposed to live the rest of my life. Um, and so holding on to that, that, that little piece of, of faith, that little piece of strength that you have left, take it, take it so, right. that you can, so that you can get out of the situation. You're right. And you know what, you know, I have, I have invested in myself by getting my coaching license and I've taken some classes and you know, mm -hmm. some of the things that you learn is that you have to understand your obstacles. Okay. You have to understand them and know how to break them down. You have to look at the whole mental picture and understand mm -hmm. that that mindset needs to go back on track and you need to set yourself back up to rebuilding your self-esteem because your abuser does take your self-esteem. They take anything that you feel good about yourself and make you feel worse. Of course, you're being called names. You, They even teach your kids to yeah. call to you some type of way. And that's why this is important about teen violence awareness. We need to teach our children how to have a relationship not with their peers and also when they're in a relationship because it's not about our body. It's not about sex. It all right. starts here. It all starts it here. Everything starts here. And if we don't break down that, you have to start to make people love your mind. Yes. And not your body. Yes. And we have to learn yes. how to, we have to know how to relate to one another. We have to know how to have open communication with our children, where our children feel comfortable to come sit down and say, mom or dad, this is what happened to me today in school. You have to open the doors to communication. That is the way that we're going to save the next generation by opening up communication, making your kids feel comfortable to come back to you and sit down and tell you what they're going through. Or you're going to find your kids going into depression, having anxiety mm -hmm. problems. Uh, they're going to have mental problems. They're not going to be communicating, not even with their peers. They will just break themselves down and lock themselves out of the world. That is so and true. Is why, that is, yeah. And we have to start young. Um, my children are 11 years old. And as soon as my, my daughters start looking at boys and saying that they were cute, we started having conversations. <laughs> um, I know growing up, my parents didn't talk to me about sex. They didn't talk to me about dating. They just told me not to do it. Um, and unfortunately, I learned... I learned in all the wrong ways about sex and about relationships. Um, how about you? When you were growing up, did your, did your family and your, did your parents or your guardian, you said you grew up with your grandmother, correct? Was no, it your my, auntie, my your auntie, auntie raised me. Mm -hmm. My auntie it was between my auntie and my grandma. But what I can tell you, they talked to us about sex, but it was kind of like with you. They didn't give us, they was just like, you don't do it. Don't go out. Don't be fast. You know, back in that time, you know, we're talking my grandma and aunties, they had old fashioned ways. So yeah. their thing was don't do it or you're going to get your butt beat, you know, or you're going to go <laughs> into punishment, not be able to go in the house. We're going to take things away from you. But see, that helped to a certain extent, but I was already broken because I already had a mother and father who was not originally to going down the wrong path. You understand where I'm coming from? Because mm -hmm. I already felt like I had no love. I had love from them, but that wasn't my parents. And I felt like my mom and my dad didn't want me. So therefore, my thing was to decide to turn to men to look for love. You understand? So this is why I say it's so important for me and my purpose and my passion 
to be the voice to show you you don't have to use your body you don't have to turn to a man to find love you can find love within your family but you understand as a family you got to want to unite and you got to do that thing together because togetherness and unity is to work as a family you will never be a family that's true. That's true. I totally agree with you. It definitely, um, before you um, came on live, that's one of the things that I mentioned that it starts in the home, whether it's with your parents, mm-hmm. whether it's your auntie, whether it's with your grandma, whoever that you are living with, um, it's the responsibility as of us as mothers, as grandmothers, as aunts and uncles and fathers to teach our kids before they learn on social media, before they learn on TV, before they learn through their peers um, who might not have the same morals and might not have the same upbringing or the same, um, uh, you know, things that we want our children to hear. We don't want our children to hear um, the wrong thing. So it starts, it starts at home. Um, But Mm -hmm. go ahead. And, you know, that that's another thing that I dislike. And I have grandchildren now. Stop letting the TV and rappers mm-hmm. and all these different things teach our children because that's how mm-hmm. they learn the wrong thing. That's why you hear girls say, oh, I want to be a stripper when I get older. No, that's not that's not a lifestyle. Right. That's a lifestyle that can lead to death and some more stuff. So as parents, you have to put control down on their limited of uh, social network. You have to watch what they're saying, what they're doing, and who they're talking to. We have to be parents again. We have to get involved with our children. We have to make them our first priority, not our second, not our third, but our first, right underneath God. Right. Okay. And you have to learn to sit down and teach your kids what life is about. Life is about getting somewhere. We want to see you go to college. We want to see you be something better than where we are. Even if we know we're doing good, you know that you're a good parent and I see that you're a good parent, but you know what? We want to go outside of your home because we know as advocates that there's girls out here who don't have mothers at home. Some of them are being raised by a father by themselves. Some are being raised by Mm -hmm. other members, but guess what? Some of the members are not going to put that love like a mother going to put into them. You're not. So that's why you have to be, that's why you have to be that person to have some love and compassion in your heart and to care for somebody else. All this self-worth and self-love is not what we need in the world today. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. need to care to share our feelings and our stories to save people for going in the graves and going in these hospitals. I go in these hospitals and see victims. I literally cry, but I have to strengthen up myself. And God said, you need to speak, speak out of your story and speak into existence of what you are today and how you got to be where you are today. So I get strong and I dry those tears up and I say, baby, let me help you. Right. I don't have to tell your business to everybody. That's true. Um, and as, as advocates and going out into the community and, to, and touching and, and um, helping victims, we have to build that trust. We have to let them know that we're not there to exploit them. We're not there to hurt them. They've already been hurt and exploited enough. We're there to help. We're there to use our experiences and, and the things that we've gone through to help. Not everything that, that worked for me might have worked for you. And my, what things happen for you might not work for them. But we're here. We're here to support you. We're here to guide you. We're here to, to give you the resources. And I sometimes can, can will honestly say, I don't know the answer to that question, or I don't know what the next step is, but you will rest assured that I will help you and I will be there with you Mm -hmm. all the whole way. And I know you're the same way as well. I am the same way. I am the same. If I don't have the answer, I will try to find the answer for you. And I'm not, I'm not a person who I can't say, you know what? Well, I have another sister to live over here and she does this and does that. I like to recommend people to people. And that's what, I know I have a helping me and I'm helping them also because again, I can't, I can't say this enough and I don't want to sound like a tape record, but unity is the first thing. Unity is the first thing that we have to do and we have to go and we have to work on these laws. We have to teach you, teach the, the, the government that this is something important. 
This is not something mm -hmm. to laugh at. We can't just keep burying daughters and sons and nieces and nephews. We can't do this stuff. We have to get out here and put our foot to the ground and make a difference. There's so many great people out here doing great things. But as you see every day, it's not stopping this epidemic with abuse. It's not because a lot of people still have that old fashioned Way of thinking it's not going to happen to me it's not going to happen to my family i hear that every day and then go right back out the door and hear that somebody got killed oh my god i never thought it would happen to my family never say never yeah it can happen to anybody and it's but not about colors to do is keep yourself right it's not it's by not colors color. not by nationality Nothing. none of that it's right, right. the and world it's sad that the only time you hear about domestic violence and assault and so forth is when it happens with celebrities, unfortunately. Um, so, exactly. yeah, if, if that's what it takes to, to raise awareness, then, then we'll take it. But that should not be the only time that we hear about it. Um, so tell us about your event. What is your, what is your event that you're doing to help our, to help our kids? Okay, my event is going to be a first annual Teen Summer Expo for 2019 Yay. by Loving Yourself No More. I'm so proud of me. Yes, and we have we have the lovely Tiffany is going to be there also. And she's one of my speakers. So, you yeah, know, this is something we're, we're going to do. <laughs> Want you to be there and we have like pamela sutherland um sullivan she's teaching all generations she's for girls she's teaching young girls how to be ladies and learning how to handle their finances how to handle relationships not just with their peers but with their parents and learning how to build up their relationship with the parents we have uh willie who's talking about being abused by a woman emotionally and so that you know know that emotionally and mentally men get abused and you have aggressive women out here who do that we That's have Javis important. Scott yes we have Javis Scott and he is my youth advisor he's going to break it down on a teenager side and when he's I say so you're going to love this young man. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> He's so amazing. And I'm frozen. I don't know why I'm frozen, but I'm looking crazy. <laughs> but this is a young man what's going on with the teenagers out here and what's going on in the schools and amongst the peers of the teenagers. So Jarvis is going to break that down. Then we also have a performance, R&B singer. We have vendors just going to be there. We have a pack talk about uh, domestic violence. His name is Pastor Larry Carter from South Carolina. We also have a lady, Liddell. She's going to talk about human trafficking from the Sexual Abuse Center here in Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, we have Angie Martin. She is a play writer, and she also writes about plays about abuse, which we're going to be working together on a play. And I'm excited Ooh. about that. 2019. Good things. Good things. <laughs> These are some of these are just a few to name. And when I tell you, I'm so Mary, my co-director, let me not forget Mary. Mary Bow is my co-director. When I tell you, she's been through so many abusive relationships to coming down to even losing her kids. But God is so good because God brought her back to her daughter and now her daughter's in her life. That's so there's good. so many different things, different aspects aspects of abuse and different types and we're going to talk about how to rebuild your life back up and talk about how we rebuild our life so this is something where i want you to leave here knowing that you have resources and you have a friend i don't care if you get one person number out of my whole session that i'm having on february 15th at Valley at Fort Valley College, you guys, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You're going to walk out there feeling like you have a friend and you have someone who can listen to you and relate to you. And they're not going to be pointing the finger. And they're not going to be pointing the finger to say, you're dumb or you stayed too long. That's not what we do. That's not what it's about. Please, people, okay. stop doing that. 
please, please have love and compassion. This is what these people need. This is what brings them out. This is what makes them come out of the dark and into the light is when you show love and compassion for them. Then they know they can move. Then they know that they challenge their self to change their mindset and to want to put their life back together. Because a lot of these women, they lose all the faith in their self and they just don't, even before they abuse it, some of them commit suicide. Yeah. Yes, that happens. Yeah, just because of how they're being treated. So as I said, again, my goal is to be a voice to speak for others. And I, I want you to take out of my story, not pity, because I don't need nobody to pity me because it didn't take pity for me to get out of my situation. It took some work. Okay. Yeah. Some real work. It's so work I don't want anyone. anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. Anytime I talk, I don't want pity. I just want you to see it for what it truly is because it's, it's raw and uncut. I'm not going to give it to you in no fabricated <laughs> type of way. I'm going to give it to you raw and you can accept it. And you can say Trina's a little rough and rough around the edges, but Hey, I I'm polished now. It's real. It's real, it's real life. Now. So it's again, your, your event, you're targeting what age group to come to this event? Okay, well, we got the high school and we got some of the middle school. So we're going from like 10 and up. And we got, Good. because we're at the college, because we're at the college, we also have the college mm -hmm. kids. So this is going to okay. be for all ages. You might as well say from 10 to like in your late, your early 20s. Okay. And where is it at? And the date and time? And Okay, it's February 15th. It's at Fort Valley College, which is in Fort Valley, Georgia. And it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to do two sessions from 10 to 12, and then we'll do the rest to 4 o'clock. Come out and um, just come out and praise the amazing event. And for these wonderful women and men who are traveling to help loving yourself, come out and do it, be a difference to make a mark to show we ain't scared to come from behind the walls we ain't scared to come from out the dark we're not scared to do anything my footsteps are being seen and i want to leave some prints behind so people can say that girl right there she made a difference i want to make a difference yeah. i want to make a difference to yeah. somebody else i already did it for myself yeah. now it's time for me to do it for others you are definitely making a difference right now. Um, talking, you. You, know, you, all, you're, you always uh, talk very well. You're always passionate about um, what you're doing. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, and I will definitely be seeing you soon. Um, okay. Your event is February 15th. And it's for kids starting at 10, 10 years old, all the way up until mid twenties, I will say. Um, and again, share share the um, the location for us again one more time. Location is Fort Valley College in Fort Valley, Georgia. Uh, if you do not have any type of directions for when you come to Georgia, please give me a call or you can send me a message through Messenger and I will give you the directions. We have no problem with doing that. If you need a ride, let us know. We will do that as well. We are all around about helping. Please, I thank you guys for this right here. I thank you, Tiffany, for coming out and doing this and having your kids involved because you showing your kids makes everybody else know that they can get their kids involved too because this is yeah. what it is. It's I, important. I bless you for doing that. How can everybody reach you? Tell us your Facebook pages, your web okay. links and so forth. Okay, well, you can reach me on my Facebook, which is all lowercase Katrina Thomas, period, L Y N. M A at gmail.com. Don't reach me any other type of way. You can reach me through, through Messenger and Facebook is under Loving Yourself No More Abuse. We have an organization page. We have a page where everybody can make their comments. You can share your um, your events or anything that you're doing positive because it's all about positive with me. If it's negative, I have no part, no time, nor do I want to partake in it. Okay. I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Katrina. As always, it's a pleasure. Um, I am going to post the link from when we had the live interview with you with the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, I'll also be posting the link for this interview as well mm. and some other links to help people throughout the month. Um, and I'll be sharing your event. So thank you. And please stay on as we um, um, say goodbye to you and have Ms. Uh, Benton come on with us next. 
Exactly. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. And God bless each and every one of you. Hope Thank to see you. you at the event. So everyone that is watching, please hold on because we are going to be talking next to Miss Author Jean Benton about her organization, Diva Nation, mm. and what she is doing this month for teen dating violence awareness. Thank you, Miss Trina. You're welcome. Bye. Bye bye. So we are going to be connecting um, Ms. Benton. Miss um, Katrina is amazing. She's amazing. I've met her several times. She was on the Speak Up and Inspire series. I will be posting links about her. Um, you can find her organization, Loving Yourself, No More Abuse, on Facebook and on Instagram. Her name is Katrina Thomas, and she is having an event in Georgia on February 15th from 10 to 4. So please be looking for my post to let you know about that event. Right now, we are going to bring on um, Miss Benton. And let's see. I am waiting to bring her on. So while we are waiting for Miss Benton to come on with us, does anyone have any questions about teen dating violence? I want to go ahead and share some statistics with you. Um, some of the statistics for teen dating violence is, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Okay, so some statistics for teen dating violence are this, that one in 10 teens um, who have been on the date have also been physically abused by a boyfriend or girlfriend in the last year. So this says that one in 10 teens who have been on the date have also been physically abused by a boyfriend or girlfriend in the last year. So that, even though it might sound like a small number is a really, really big number because that one in 10 could be your child. It could be my child. And we do not want to hear of any more cases of children that are being killed. We just had a, a young girl, 16 years old here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's been about two or three weeks now. Her boyfriend, 18, I believe years old, beat her to death beat her to death and she died in the hospital from being in the coma for a couple of days. They had a young child together, less than a year old. He beat her to death and she died. Um, I also heard a story maybe two weeks ago with one of my other advocates and another youth organization where one of the young ladies that she was trying to mentor um, was killed by her boyfriend, shot in the head and killed in her home, in her mother's home, shot and killed in the head, point blank. A young girl, 16 years old, dating a 21 year old, shot her in the head and killed her. This is what is going on with our children right now. And it's something that um, can be prevented most times if we just talk to our children. If we talk to our children, talk to them about abuse. There are different types of abuse that I think it's important for us to mention um, when we're talking about teen dating violence. The different forms of abuse are the same when it comes to adult intimate violence. So teen dating violence and adult intimate violence are the same thing. The only difference is the age groups. So there are different types of abuse, which we talked about in the last segment with Hope Speaks about human trafficking. There are different types of human trafficking. There are different types of abuse. It usually, as Ms. Katrina said, starts with mental and emotional abuse, name calling, um, calling someone out their name, making them feel um, less of a person, um, destroying their um, their their self-esteem, their self-worth, uh, putting them down, um, talking negative to, negatively to other people about them. So these are the kinds of, of emotional and mental abuse that usually starts before you, I'm sorry. Okay, so before you... Um, it turns into physical abuse. So we need to talk to our children about that. There are some links that I'm going to post later that if you have a, a, 
a teen that is dating or you have a young adult in your home that is dating, it's a quiz that they can take that gives them some risk factors and some questions to think about when it comes to um, their relationship. Um, Some of the questions that are on here are, let's see. Does your, and this is for someone as a friend. So the questions are, does your friend's partner support their dreams or goals? Does your friend's partner pressure them into sex or doing other sexual activities? Does your friend's partner constantly ask for your friend's social media passwords? Does your friend's partner respect your friend's alone time? So these are some of the questions that are in these quizzes that I'm going to post later that you can share with your teens, your adolescents, your young adults, and even yourself to help you to identify if there are some risk factors in your relationship that are abusive. Because sometimes people don't know that they're in an abusive relationship until someone talks to them and educates them and raises awareness about the different types of abuse. So we are going to try to bring on Miss Benton. And for some reason... For some reason, it is not letting me do it. So let's see. Hmm. For some reason, it is not letting me add her. So what I'm going to do um, is... I'm going to ask Trina if she is watching to disconnect um, and then join us after I get Miss Benton on because for some reason um, it's not letting me. And this is a learning lesson. I was trying to get two amazing people on during the same show. And uh, it's not exactly working the way that we thought it was going to be. We were hoping that we could disconnect from Katrina and then add... um, um, Miss Benton, and then ha- bring on Miss Jean, but for some reason it is not working. So hopefully we will be able to get uh, Miss Benton on before we finish out the show. But I wanted to make sure that I impress upon the teen dating violence that we should also include when we're talking to our kids. We should also talk to them about violence, period. Um, Gun safety, talking to them about guns in the schools. What are some scenarios? What are the things that they would do if they were in a situation at school where violence was about to occur? Um, I talk to my children all the time about about violence in the schools. I talk to them about scenarios. Like, what would you do if a person with a gun walked into your school? What would you do? What would you do if you heard that um, one of your friend's boyfriend hit her? What would you do? So talk to your children. Have these kind of dialogues. Talk to them about different situations. Um, There's so many different videos and resources, especially on YouTube, where you can look up human trafficking for teens or teen dating violence for teens or teen um, violence or gun violence among teens watch those videos with them, have discussions, see what your children's mindsets are and educate them on safety things of what they should do. Okay, so we are going to try to bring on Miss Benton now and see if we can get her on because if not, that means we will have to bring her on another time because for some reason... It is not allowing me to do it. So we're going to try one more time. And bring her on. Because uh, Miss Benton is having a event this Saturday, February 9th, here in Concord, North Carolina. And it's for teens. Um, I will be going along with the kids to go to the event um, so that we can learn about teen dating violence right here 
close to home. So we have an event with Katrina, which is going to be in Georgia on February 15th. And we are also going to have a event here, right here in Concord, North Carolina, where we are going to be, or Ms. Benton is going to be hosting an event here as well. So her event is going to be here February 9th. And I will share it on my timeline right now so that you can see it. It is going to be uh, her second annual teen dating and violence free luncheon in Concord, North Carolina. And it is going to be, um, they're going to be serving pizza, Valentine's candy. And the topic is going to be teen dating awareness. She is going to have two phenomenal facilitators who is going to be Mr. Alex Mr. Alex, I believe, Payan and Miss Ari Jett, um, they are going to be talking about healthy and unhealthy relationships, which is something that our children need to learn about. Um, that is going to be this weekend, February 9th. I believe it starts at noon up until three o'clock. I will share the information on my page. I'm ask actually doing it right now. If you are interested in coming, please check out the link. Please check out the information. Um, to register is for free. Um, it is for adolescents or our kids that are at dating age. So unfortunately, our children are starting young these days. They're dating young, and sometimes it's without us even knowing. So this is an opportunity for you to bring your kids, whether you have given them permission to date or not, to come and learn about what healthy and unhealthy relationships are. What exactly are healthy and unrelation, unhealthy relationships are? And even for adults, it is important for us to hear this information as well because we lead by example. If we are in healthy relationships and our children are seeing us in healthy relationships, then they too will learn to be in healthy relationships. The same is true, vice versa. If we as parents or guardians are in unhealthy relationships, we are victims of domestic violence and staying in the situation. If we are in relationships that are emotionally and mentally draining and stressful and abusive to us, if, even if it's not physical, it can be just as harmful when we have someone that is calling us names, calling us the B word, putting us down all the time, especially in front of our children. There was a movie that I watched and I can't remember the name of it, but the guy was abusive to the mother and he took the child away and the little boy was sneaking to call his mother. And when he was sneaking to call his mother, the father walked in and he said to him, didn't I tell you to stop talking to your mother? And the little boy was very fearful. He was very scared. And he said, yes. And the father said, because what is your mother? And the little boy said, mommy is a whore. So that is a form of emotional and mental abuse, not only for the mother, but also for the child. When your abuser male or female, mom or dad is saying to the children, your mom is a whore, your mom is a bee, your mom is no good, your mom is fat and nasty, your mom looks like this or your mom is like that, or belittling her or belitt belittling him in front of your children, not only are you subjected as the adult to the emotional and mental abuse, but so are your parents as well. I mean, sorry, sorry, so are your children as well. So we want to be mindful. We want to be mindful of the type of relationships that we have. And going to this um, this luncheon this Saturday right here in Concord, August 9th from 12 to 3, is going to be about healthy versus unhealthy relationships. And to be quite honestly, as an adult, this is the kind of information that we need to hear as well so that we can teach our children. So unfortunately, it looks like I'm not able to bring Miss Benton on for some reason. I'm not sure why, um, because it looks like I can invite other people, but I can't invite her. So I have no idea what's going on. Um, but 
what I will do is I will schedule to talk to her um, live sometime this week before her event so that she can tell you personally about her event this Saturday. She can tell you about her, or her organization, Diva Nation. You can go to her organization. She's on Facebook and Instagram to find out more about this event this Saturday, February 9th starting at 12. It's for the kids, but it's also for us too. Good information for your kids to hear with you and also for us to hear. It's always, 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 always good to get a refresher as the adults to learn about healthy and unhealthy relationships. You can save yourself and you can save your children by talking and having these kind of conversations in the home. It starts at home. We have to protect our children at home. It starts there. Um, don't be afraid to talk to your kids about sex. Don't be afraid to talk to your kids about dating. Don't be afraid when your daughter, like mine, <laughs> comes home and says, oh, mommy, he's so cute, so forth and so on. Those are the times to have those conversations. Talk to them. Well, it's not just about outward beauty. What's their personality? How do they treat you? How do they talk to you? Who are their parents? What kind of family environment is this is this girl, boy, or woman or man coming from? We need to talk to our children. And again, for me, Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is not just about talking about teen dating. It's also about talking about violence. Children are carrying guns these days. They are going into schools and they are killing people, massive people in the schools, whether they're killing one person or they're killing hundreds of people, they are killing people. I, I saw a boy the other day on Sugar Creek walking down the street and his pants was hanging down past his butt like they wear, which I completely hate. Mm -hmm. And he had, excuse me, and he had um, a gun in, in his side. Now, North Carolina, you can carry a gun, but it has to be visible if you don't have a concealed carry license. But this boy couldn't have been no more than 17, 18 years old. Why is he carrying around a gun? Unfortunately, the streets are horrible and the streets can be violent and they can be dangerous. But why is this young boy carrying around a gun? What are our kids going to do if they see this boy walking around the gun? Are they going to think it's cool? Are they going to report it? Are they going to stay away from him? Are they going to be attracted to this big bad guy who's who's carrying around a gun? We we need to know. We need to talk to our kids. We need to have these kind of conversations. We need to know what they would do in certain situations. We need to know if they understand the the that certain behaviors are not cool. The certain things that that people do that are evil and are bad and are harmful to other people are not cool. They're not attractive. And that's not the kind of people that they want to be around. The Bible says bad associations spoil useful habits. It's true. We want to know who our kids are talking to, who they're communicating with, who they're hanging out with. We want to know these kids' backgrounds. Who are their parents? Have they ever been in any trouble? We want to talk to our kids, not just about dating, not just about boys and girls, not just about the, the birds and the bees. We want to talk to them about crime and violence, especially the, the crime and violence that is affecting your specific neighborhood. What's going on around you? Do y'all read the paper together? Do y'all look at the news? Talk to your kids. Talk to your kids. It's important. I don't want to hear any more of my friends losing their kids. Last In the last two or three years, I've had about four friends lose their niece to murder. She was kidnapped and murdered, raped and murdered. Another one, two from human trafficking, disappeared. One of them was found. One of them is still missing. And then another, her son, went to go meet a young lady that he met offline. Her and her friends killed this boy. Good looking boy, handsome boy. Thought he was going to go meet a, meet, a, meet a young lady. And they killed him. And she couldn't find her son for, I believe, nine months. Anguish. I don't want to be that mom. I don't want you to be that mom. I, I, I can't, I can't imagine. Talk to your kids, have conversations, educate them, educate yourself, be more aware, talk. It starts at home. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.
Um, I will be posting the link to this interview so that you can look at it again with your family. Um, you can share it on your social medias as well. Um, also, I will be sharing the events of both Katrina and Ms. Jean. Unfortunately, we couldn't have her on, but I will schedule to have her on this week before her event on Saturday. Um, I will be sharing various links on my page. My page is uh, public, so you will be able to access this. You will be able to see it. Um, please. Follow up, share this with your, your family, share this with your girls, share this with your boys. Go to these events, February 15th in Georgia, um, February 9th in Concord, North Carolina, and continue to listen in. All month, I'll be talking about teen dating violence awareness. Next week, we'll be talking to Snow with Young Women Saved by Grace. She's a mentor, and she's going to tell you about the importance of using your experiences to mentor youth. Have a good night.